<laughs> and uh, I do my place. <laughs> <You didn't say laughs> no, no. Well, and Lord, I think Lord grade it is now. Lord right? grade, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> Low grade, as <coughs> people call it, miss. Shows you what money can do for you. Yeah. And, uh... Hey, we asked you. Is that Michael right now again? Yeah, Mike's fine. Directors, of course, uh, depending on whom you talk to, are, are the uh, creators of the art form of movies or are the interpreters of the art form begun by the writer. I'm not sure where Peter Yates uh, fits in that. I, I guess we should ask you what you think uh, the, the, the role of a director can be or is. I, th I think that the role of the of the director is to translate. I think that um, with the author, the whole author theory, I think got a lot of people muddled and uh, was responsible for an awful, awful lot of very self-indulgent pictures, yeah. which um, didn't necessarily entertain the audiences. Um, there has to be somebody to make the decisions. There has to be somebody whose final. Uh, taste is responsible for making decisions because otherwise it'd be chaos and once seen films made by committees and with, almost without exception they're awful. T tell us the movies that you're uh, particularly proud of directing. Well, Breaking Away, which, which I'm talking about. Right. Uh, not just because it's the one we're talking about. I really do feel that it's my most complete movie but that really isn't surprising when you consider that I've been working with the writer Steve Tessage really for eight years to, to develop and, and produce a movie, not the, exactly the same script, but, but we've tried with two other scripts in very much the same vein as, as Breaking Away. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously, therefore, to me, it is something which is very much of a, uh, of a labor of love or a, or a holiday almost. But to give people a perspective on mm -hmm. you, tell us about the other some ones. of the other movies. Uh, Eddie Coyle, before Friend, that, Friends used to be my favorite. I love The Friends of Eddie Coyle. Uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid it's the only movie of mine that's not made money. Um, well, now <laughs> that's quite uh, a statement that you've only had one that didn't make money. Yeah, I, I, I suppose. Well, the other the other ones have not always uh, gone into profit. I mean, when I say profit, profit that I get. Right. Uh, but in every case, uh, I've been told that in fact the studio has got its money back which after all I think is one's basic responsibility. Right. I'm very lucky the last three I made, in fact, I've even seen some of the profits, so they must have made a fortune. <laughs> and those were, <laughs> go ahead and give us a little litany of your movies. Um, the last three were uh, For Pete's Sake with Barbara Streisand, uh, Mother Jugs and Speed with uh, Bill Cosby and Raquel Welsh, uh, and um, The Deep with Robert Shaw, and Nick Nolte and Jacqueline Bissett. Who doesn't like to be told that she's beautiful. I interviewed her recently. She got very up upset when we started talking about her looks. So I said, well, frankly, you aren't that good looking in person. To which she replied that I must be a very insecure male to attack her. And I said, no, I was just going along with your observation that you really aren't that beautiful. And you're not. You do photograph beautifully. But in person, mm -hmm. rather ordinary. I heard she'd been getting a bit difficult recently. Yeah, I guess uh, she, it, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to get interesting, it too. Was, well, it was a great <laughs> underwater t-shirt. I think the underwater shot of her in a t-shirt did more for her career than her face, perhaps. Yeah, well, they sold a lot of t-shirts, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> did you know, by the way, in that shot, did you know what you were going to get? Sure. And that's why you did it, or that's it was, was one of the reasons? Uh, it was only one of the reasons. Um, Ron Tolsky, who, who was the costume designer on that, who um, I had met through uh, Raquel Welsh during Mother Jugs and Speed, and who in fact was responsible for Raquel's clothes on uh, Mother Jugs and Speed. Uh, he's a very, uh, a very good clothes designer, um, especially for film, because he knows how, you know, how clothes are going to look and how they're going to photograph, which is it's really a very difficult, very specialized job. And we were talking about you know, what people could wear and what people do wear. It was obvious that we had to put um, the stars into clothes that could be doubled for certain scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was important that they should be should be clothes which could be readily recognized. Um, and a thing that, that people wear 
when they're diving, when, especially when it's a little bit cold in the water, is you do wear a T-shirt. And we tried various colors. And Ron, the whole time, said, you know, no, white, white is white, marvelous. And um, he was right. White is marvelous. <laughs> it certainly was. But what, uh, what do you think of the state of movies today? And let me state this premise. It seems to me they're, they're for every good movie, movie made, and I think Breaking Away is, a, is an excellent movie. I don't often say that in these interviews. I usually don't even talk about the movie because it seems to detract from more important things, movie making. Mm -hmm. But why is it that so many bad movies seem to be made, and yet when you go to California, you see people with hundreds of scripts, great ideas, and some of the worst movies seem to get made with, from some mm -hmm. of the worst scripts? Yeah. It's Maybe you don't even agree with me. I, but. No, I do agree with you entirely. I mean, uh, this was the, as I say, one of the uh, reasons that I wanted to make make this movie because uh, I've always felt that Steve Tessage was a writer who should be encouraged to write. I think we, I think we, there is a shortage of good writers. But now, Peter, I hear people say that again and again, mm -hmm. and yet I know good writers today who have wonderful scripts. They can't even get people to read them. Now, explain that yeah. gap to me. Well, it, it's it's true. Uh, I try and read scripts. Uh, in fact, I'm working at the moment on a, on a, a script of another writer uh, who had never ever had a, a screenplay produced. And he may not have this one produced either, I don't know. It depends yeah. if we can get it made. Yeah. But, uh, you know, people do send you scripts and one is inclined not to read them. And I must say, about a hundred times out of about a hundred and one, the scripts are not very good. Uh, there seems to be something about scripts when they're read by your friends that they seem to be very much better yeah. than when they come from out of the blue. Right. Um, script writing is an extremely difficult craft. It's an extremely uh, uh, frustrating craft for a writer. Writers are treated abominably badly in, in Hollywood. Uh, I think that they may be treated slightly better now because I think that there are uh, some people, and, and as directors are getting uh, more power in, in a lot of cases, I think that, that any director of intelligence appreciates the value of a good script and of a good script writer. I like to have my writers with me when I'm shooting. I, I feel embarrassed when people refer to Breaking Away as being my picture. It's not my picture. It's as much Steve Tessage's as it is mine. In fact, in some ways, it's very much more his than it is mine. Let me do, briefly describe the movie. It's the, essentially the story of a, um, well, I have to go back even further. It takes place uh, on the campus of my alma mater, Indiana University in, in the Midwest in Indiana. But I think essentially it's the story of the townies, as we call them, the people who live in the town, which is a stone quarry town and a very blue collar town, as opposed to the intellectual, the, the kids in college, and out of that, of course, blossoms a major story of class, almost yeah. American-style class, I, and that's. Uh, Steve was at it. Was it was also an alumnus of uh, Indiana University. I'm glad we're all getting it right, so not that other way around that people keep on saying it's yes. so wrong. <laughs> now, do you know the, why that's called? I don't know why. It's I don't know. I, I think perhaps it was established to give it some uh, some different identity and. Uh, Ah. Hoosiers, Indiana people have always been very uh, independent-minded. Perhaps that was the reason. I'm not sure I ever knew that. That's the other mystery I could never solve when we were in Indiana, which is where the word Hoosier came from. I've never heard a satisfactory. I've heard no, all the kinds two, of No, but I hate yeah. both of them. They're like very bad pub jokes. Yeah, yeah. So that it's not even worth repeating them. Yeah, right. <laughs> what did you think of the Midwest in this, that I small I liked it, but I said Steve, uh, Steve Tessage was, in fact, uh, at Indiana University. Uh, he was uh, brought up in southern Chicago and went to Indiana University on a wrestling scholarship. Um, so that, you know, the whole story is very close to him. I mean, he felt a great identity with the Cutters, and yet uh, he had been at the, at, the, uh, at the college. Right. He, uh, uh, well, back again to writer versus director. Uh, I was trying to get some understanding between who's more responsible for what we see on the screen. I think, you see, a writer's craft is to present something on paper. I think quite often, uh, I mean, a writer quite often has no visual uh, imagination. There are some very visual writers. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, the ability and talent to write well doesn't necessarily uh, include the talents 
that are needed to be a director. Right. I mean, I know that Steve is always saying to me, oh, I can't be bothered to talk to them. I can't be bothered. If they don't know what I want, I can't be bothered. You know? <laughs> and I think a lot of writers feel that. They feel, I've thought of it. I can understand it. Why can't anyone else understand it? Yeah, you know? yeah. um, and they spend a lot of time thinking out the characters and working out the dialogue. Well, that's not true, because to portray something on the screen, there is a, there is a, you know, a third power, which is the act, you know, which is, who are the actors. Mm -hmm. I mean, the actors have to actually get up there and portray those emotions, believe those emotions, and be responsible for the audience identifying with those yeah. emotions. And the director's job is to work with the actors and make the feeling that the, that the writer wishes to put over come from the screen and go to an audience. Well, yeah, <coughs> I've heard many people say, and I think you're expressing, it's very difficult to make a good movie. <coughs> it is. A lot there of things so have details. to work just right. There are so many details. And you'd be surprised when you look back on some movies you've enjoyed, which when you really break it down, there were maybe two good scenes in that picture, but you were so grateful for two good scenes. Yeah. That, that, uh, and there were two scenes you could talk about. And if people can go away and talk about a movie, uh, then the movie's going to be successful. Do you think directors get typecast as much as actors do? Yeah, I think especially. You see, when you're dealing with the kind of money that, that films involve nowadays, uh, the people with money quite naturally get nervous. So they'd rather say, I mean, if you're going to choose a restaurant, for instance, if you've been to a restaurant and got a sort of mediocre meal, mm -hmm you probably won't go again. But if you know a place where there's a great steak and they always cook it right, but the potatoes aren't partic particularly good and whatever you do, don't touch the chicken, uh, you go there and you eat steak, right? So unfortunately, when it comes down to spending money, I think we're all much the same. We all like to go with something that we can rely on, especially as money gets shorter and shorter. How about your, <coughs> your nationality? Uh, British, I presume? Yes. Born Scotland. and raised in, in yes. Scotland, yes. in England, in yeah. Scotland? Right. Do you think that gives you a more incisive view of American life than uh, a Native American might have of ourselves? I don't know. I've never really been given the opportunity to, um, to work in England on, on this kind of a film, a film that, that I really do, and I, I'm very proud of it. I really think that it rep does represent Americana, and it certainly is uh, my feeling of, of admiration for America. And I think probably not being American, you know how it is, it's more difficult for American to say, hey, you know, they can say, hey, we've got this and we've got that. Yeah. But I think it's easier for somebody from outside to look and say, look, you know, you've got wonderful energy, wonderful vitality, you've got terrific things going for you. Why are you always looking to other countries right. uh, and admiring the things that they have? Right. No, it's true. I know in England, most people want to come to America. Sure. They feel very defeated by English society yeah. today. Uh, and yet most Americans think England's really the, or cer certain people in our society yeah. think, look, look to Europe as a sense of quality of life, which is true, but yeah. it's, I guess the grass is always greener, shall I repeat it an sure old bromide. Yeah, well there, you now you see, if you see this film, you see what happens to you if you follow the Europeans too much, you know, they'll, uh, <laughs> okay. I don't know if that's a, a legal word on, on television, <laughs> but still. Well, we'll try. Peter Yates, thank you very much. Thank you. Right. We'll be right back. Did the um, oh, nice. okay, fine. did the studio put up the money for the movie? Yes. 